AMD just showed up to Computex and torched NVIDIA's budget hopes because the 9060 XT is here and it just might be the final nail in the 5060's coffin. Meanwhile, NVIDIA is leaking a 5080 Super that guzzles over 400 watts of power and Noctua shocked everyone by finally going liquid. Plus, hey, Asus wants you to yank your graphics card out of your case and dock it externally. Today's news is nuts. You know the drill. Let's get into it. All right, guys, AMD just curb stomped the mid-range GPU market. This 9060 XT might be their best value play in years. Let's check it out. That's right, boys and girls. It's finally official. The Radeon RX 9060 XT, 299 bucks for the eight gig card and 349 for the 16 gigabyte model. This is a very strategic play in the mid-range GPU market, positioning them squarely against NVIDIA's 5060 and also the 5060 Ti. AMD has not wasted the opportunity to announce its gaming Radeon RX 9060 XT at the Computex keynote. This graphics card has been long rumored and was even mentioned by AMD employees as launching this quarter, which has now been confirmed. There have been a lot of rumors and questions about this card. Specifically, were they going to even move forward with an eight gigabyte model, seeing as how poorly NVIDIA's eight gig card has done. But turns out they are releasing it. Pricing looking pretty aggressive on these cards. It's not too bad. The Radeon RX 9060 XT is positioned to compete against that 5060 Ti. AMD presented a slideshow showing the Radeon GPU beating the 5060 Ti 8GB by 6% on average, although it used its 16 gig variant for the comparison. Another slide claims a 15% improvement in performance per dollar. And that's, I guess, really what you should be paying attention to when it comes to how much you're going to spend on this AMD card. Performance per dollar, far better value on the AMD side of things. I think that's probably pretty universally understood. Now, here's a big question when it comes to pricing. Are there gonna be some potential challenges on pricing because you have a lack of reference models on this card. Uh, this is a card that's exclusively being released through board partners only, meaning the reference design shown is just for illustration. It's just there to look nice and boy, doesn't it? Could we get this card? AMD, are you, are you sticking to your guns on this one? Are you sure we can't get a reference model? That looks pretty nice. While this could be beneficial by allowing partners more freedom with their card designs, AMD has a history of prioritizing its own designs and limiting GPU stock to partners. In practice, even the RX 9070 series, which followed the same approach, face significant challenges in maintaining MSRP. Uh, so we'll see what happens when it comes to pricing challenges. You know, with the 9070 XT, it resulted in some price hikes that kind of raised some concerns about this card's affordability. We're seeing some great prices, MSRP. You'll see a 16 gig model at 349, eight gig at 299. Let's compare that to Nvidia. MSRP on the 5060 Ti, 429. That's a 16 gig model. The eight gig model, 379 very aggressive on pricing. Let's get some predictions on how this is gonna roll out. I'm interested to know what you guys think. Looks like a great card. It's built on RDNA 4 architecture. You've got 32 compute units, 64 AI accelerators, and you have FSR 4 support. So, and get this, this is a novel idea. Reviewers don't want you to know this one simple trick. Providing your card, a simple trick. Will AMD do it? I sure hope so. Is this a card that you are interested in picking up? Does it fit the bill for what you're looking for for your GPU? Let me know down below. Let's take a look at some of the comments here and see what's going on. As long as they're trying to match NVIDIA, they'll never capture market share. They could have offered this card as one SKU with 12 gigs of VRAM and more FSR4 support at 299. That'd be an interesting buy and indeed aggressive pricing. I think it's interesting. And I think actually AMD was kind of weighing this option in all reality. I think they were weighing very heavily whether to do an eight gigabyte model or not. However, I think they were so far down the production line that you know, to abandon it probably didn't make a whole lot of sense. But I'm sure if they had a magic crystal ball that could have told them what happened with NVIDIA's 50 series eight gigabyte card release, they probably would have used a time machine to not produce those eight gigabyte cards if I were to guess. All right, guys, we finally have details on the RTX 5080 Super, and it's not what anyone expected. Let's check it out. NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 5080 Super Spec Leak. This is 24 gigabyte card, 5080, 32 gigabytes, G7 memory, and the same core count as the RTX 5080. So you get the same 10,752 CUDA cores 
as the base RTX 5080, but you get that upgraded 24 gigs of GDDR7 memory. Usually, when Copite shares updates on the GeForce series, it means NVIDIA has provided specs to board partners. He's got connections. That's what, that's what they're trying to tell you here. This doesn't always mean that the specs are final, and we've seen them change many times before. Power consumption on this is very interesting. I want you guys to pay attention to this. This rumor suggests that the 5080 Super and the 5080 would share the same core count, which is surprising. However, the Super variant is said to include an upgrade in memory, so you get that 24 gigs of sweet, sweet GDDR7 memory. Of course, this means that the RTX 5080 Super will use, ah ha ha, we found a use, <laughs> NVIDIA is starting to use it, the three gigabyte GDDR7 modules, just like the RTX 5090 laptop GPU. The leak goes further, claiming the 5080 Super will feature 32 gigabytes per second memory, <laughs> the fastest GDDR7 spec to date. Check this out. Uh, this is going to push push the crap out of the bandwidth on this card. Uh, beyond one terabyte per second, crazy. Uh, naturally, the increased memory capacity and speed would also raise power requirements. Here we go. Said to be over 400 watts, at least 40 watts higher than the RTX 5080. You guys remember these, uh, these little leaks that came out and saw the MSI box with the 24 gigs of GDDR7. We've seen this leak in multiple places, not just from MSI. I believe there was something from Zotac 2 on their website that we covered. Um, so this has been a rumor for a while, and it, it appears to be coming to fruition. So with this 400 watt power consumption, you're going to need obviously some robust cooling. And if you're buying a 5080 Super, I'm guessing you've budgeted in the power consumption, right? If you are planning on getting this 24 gig card from NVIDIA, the 5080 Super. Copite did not mention when this card might be released. I'm curious what you guys think personally. CES 2026? I, I don't think it's coming this year. I could be wrong. I could be totally wrong, but let me know what your predictions are below. If we fast forward to the future and you got it right, I will give you a shiny, free pat on the back. Oh boy, Noctua just dropped their first ever liquid cooler. I was never sure that this day was gonna come. And, and yes, obviously, it's stupid quiet. Let's take a look at it. Noctua, known for air coolers, very, very respected brand, and you know them well by the beautiful brown fan design. Well, apparently Noctua is going to be entering the AIO market. They presented their first 42360 and 240 millimeter CPU liquid coolers at Computex. No name for them yet. We don't know what they're going to be called. When I saw the Q1 of 2026, this is what I love about Noctua. They are always so committed to thorough testing, quality assurance. So the fact that they're showing them at Computex and waiting to launch and doing all the research and coming up with the, I, I think it's just a great way to roll it out to say, yes, we're dabbling in it. And there's also some very cool things that they're working with on these AIOs where potentially, this is kind of crazy, thermo siphon technology. I didn't even know, I had no idea what that was until this. Let's check it out. Computex 2025 Noctua is showcasing its first all-in-one AIO liquid cooler. This is featuring the Asetek G8 V2 pump rather than developing its own pump, which is kind of interesting. They're relying on the Asetek technology, widely used in many, many, many coolers. Uh, Noctua is focusing on optimizing cooling performance, efficiency, and noise levels through a series of advanced design choices. The company has introduced its own sound isolation system for the pump unit. Noctua, very well known for noise reduction techniques in a lot of their products that they release. Um, mass dampeners, acoustic foam, in this AIO. It's designed to reduce pump vibrations and it has three operating modes that it will come out of box equipped with. Quiet, balanced, and manual. Now you can pair these with Noctua's fans and they're going to release those three size variants for the AIO themselves. This is kind of cool as well. They're using Noctua's SecuFirm Plus mounting system. So that means if you are an existing Noctua customer that has an existing air cooler from Noctua that uses the same mounting hardware, you might not even have to replace your brackets, which is kind of fun. If you're like a diehard Noctua fan, because they did a Noctua is working on some other incredible cooling projects as well. We're going to have to wait to see these. But this is one that I've been following for a little bit now. It's really kind of cool. They're doing this thermo siphon 
development project. So this would be a two-phase thermosiphon CPU cooler with flexible tubing. Cool thing about this cooling technology, no pump noise, vibration, and super reliable. So this is something they've been working on for a long time now. There's no ETA on, on this, but hopefully we can see it maybe sometime next year alongside when they launched a new AIO. We'll have to stay tuned to see, but this is a really cool development that Noctua is actively working on right now. So very, very cool. All right, let's take a look at the comments, see what everyone is saying about this. Uh, this is going to cost at least $300, isn't it? It's hard to get excited, but maybe some people will find it interesting. Hey, Noctua fans go hard. They, they go hard, man. So listen, an AIO from Noctua, what I think is really cool about this is it just kind of furthers Noctua into their commitment to making silent cooling technology outside of just air coolers. While the product itself may not be super interesting, I think it does kind of highlight the direction that Noctua is trying to go. And that is what I'm most excited for, especially stuff like this thermosiphon development, things like this. If they can get this off the ground and make it something that's like a household name that just gets rid of a lot of the noise that is inherent with cooling your system, that could be really cool. So I have to wait till Q1 of 2026 to be able to finally buy a poop colored AIO. Imagine having to wait for something. Are you interested in Noctua's new AIO line? It's coming. 2026. Let me know down below. Guys, Asus wants you to undock your graphics card and take it on the go. Welcome to the future of modular PC gaming. Check this out. Asus unveils the ROG XG Station 3 eGPU solution. This has got Thunderbolt 5 on it, and it's got a hidden power connector design. This is an external GPU dock, and it utilizes Thunderbolt 5. This is the first Thunderbolt 5 eGPU solution from Asus, and it was announced at Computex. In Asus's case, the most noteworthy elements are the Starship-like design, very unique, looks super sleek. This is a key feature, removable adapter design, which allows users to take advantage of motherboards that support cable-free power delivery to graphics cards. Unlike previous solutions, this design doesn't limit motherboard compatibility. Users can either stick with standard cables or upgrade later to a motherboard that supports the new standard. Check this out. Okay, so eGPUs, a dock that is external that utilizes Thunderbolt 5, gives you 80 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. Really, this is the technology that's needed in order to operate a GPU externally on a dock like this. Kind of makes the, it brings them a little bit closer to their internal counterparts, if you will. Power connector on this delivers up to a thousand watts of power. Uh, although ASUS doesn't currently offer any graphics cards that require that much power and hopefully never will. Instead, the featured model is this Astral 5090, which is the, the bad mama jama of GPUs right now. So with Thunderbolt 5, you've got 80 gigabytes per second bandwidth. This is a great solution for somebody who is looking uh, like a creative professional or gamers. You wanna do some gaming or creating on the go. If you're looking for desktop level gaming experiences on things like, like a laptop, this would be a great solution for that. So there's a trade-off, right? When you go external with your graphics card, there's always going to be a trade-off using a dock. So they did some testing on this and the eGPU closely matches desktop performance in Blender and AI workloads, which is what I would imagine a lot of use cases for this would be. Gaming, yes, I think most of it's probably gonna be AI related stuff, but uh, seem to do well in terms of performance when it comes to those AI workloads. So check this out on the gaming side of things, Cyberpunk, Alan Wake 2, the eGPU trails the desktop slightly, but it still outperforms the mobile GPU, making it a solid option for users seeking a high-end modular GPU performance. No word in terms of pricing or release date. There's also probably going to be a lot more testing going on with these units now that they're in the hands of folks that can do that testing independently. So keep an eye on that. I could not, in good conscience, my goodness, roll up with this bad boy in tow and, uh, and set up shop. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today. I have a bunch more videos coming out, so make sure that you hit subscribe to Keep up to date when I've got new ones dropping. I'm trying to do several a week. So check it out. If there's something that you would like me to talk about, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.